All right, and it's time for another tube time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Today I thought I'd revisit the bass fed well I don't really know if you can call this a Tesla coil because it's not technically it's not a Tesla coil because it's not a transformer and it works in a completely different way that a Tesla coil works so I don't really know but anyway for now we'll just call it a bottom fed vacuum tube Tesla coil now I'm at a point now where I do get a plasma flame because I've been experimenting with various different coils and seeing what gives me the best results. Now, these aren't the two coils that actually work. I'm just curious about how this is going to, what I'm going to get if I use those two coils. But I'll just take you through a brief tour of the circuit. Now, I'm sure you're curious about what's in this black box here. So I'm going to open that up and show you. Now, this is the high voltage part of the power supply got two transformers back to back so I've got mains going into this transformer here then it gets converted to 24 volts then that 24 volts goes into this transformer where it gets stepped up to about 250 volts because they're not exactly matched but it's close enough and then I've got a whole boatload of capacitors and some diodes and what that is, not a voltage doubler, it's a voltage tripler, which will give me three times the peak voltage of the AC, which is going to be around a thousand volts. Now, I know some of you are going, oh my god, it's a thousand volts, he's going to kill himself. Please, yes, this is a little bit dangerous. However, it's no more dangerous than crossing the road. And I should know, because I have been hit more than once while crossing the road. And I'm still here, and that's a lot more dangerous than this is. So, no need to be concerned about my safety. At all. I mean, I mean I'm not going to do something stupid like hold the screwdriver by both hands and touch one... Ow! Just kidding. It wasn't even on. But seriously, I do take safety steps before I do any of these experiments. I always keep one hand in my pocket or behind myself. If I should touch anything live, it's only going to go into one hand. It's not going to go all the way through my body. And I'm pretty well insulated, so again, no need to worry. But anyway, with that little ramble about you all being concerned for my safety, well, now you know. So we got this as our high voltage power supply and this transformer here is just to power the filament and I've just taped these windings to the wall because I'm not using those I'm only using one set of output windings so anyway this is the circuit itself and I've decided that because I'm going to be testing different coils I'm using crocodile clips so I can quickly and easily swap out the different coils and see which works best now we'll put up a schematic of this circuit it's pretty much the same vacuum tube base fed vacuum tube tesla coil thing that you've seen a thousand times already but i will just do a little demonstration right now all right so let's see how this works and i've also taken robot 797 has also given me some advice on how i can film this because i had trouble filming this it would always make the camera glitch out and he suggested that I should wrap the camera in foil and then ground it so hopefully that's going to sort out that little problem surprised I didn't think of that myself I'll turn this on and we'll see if we get anything okay I can draw an arc off that it's not starting a flame though you probably heard a very loud buzz on your end because this circuit likes to throw out a 
ton of interference. Right, let's see what happens with a light bulb or a fluorescent tube. Um, I'll try and hold it. Okay. Well, there we go. Actually, I've just turned it off and the, the, the tube is still on. I can still see a bit of glow out of that. That means that's not pulling much current. Actually, I wonder if I put that in there, in the coil, just see if that will light up. I think it will, but let's see. Oh yes, that totally lights up. Just turn the power off and just, wow, well, just look how long that's, that's taking forever to go out. It's just running off the energy in the capacitors, and it's still going. I can still see a little bit of light right at the end there. I know you cannot. Okay, there it goes. It's gone. That must have been well over 10 seconds for this thing to go completely out. Uh, just out of curiosity, let's see what happens if I put it in this coil, which is the inductor. Let's see if it lights up if I put it in there. And yes, it does. Let's see how long that takes to go out. Still going, still going, it's still going. Okay, there it goes, it's gone. All right, well, we know that works. So, next thing to do now is to put in the coils that I know work so far and see what it does. Okay, I've replaced the coil with this coil here, which is much more suited for this kind of circuit. So, that's an entirely different resonator. Change the inductor to this one here, and this one does produce plasma. Okay, save these off. My voltage is on. And there we go. Flames. Now, it does go a little bit weird if I put more power into this thing because I am powering this through my heater, which I'm using as a ballast. And even with all this foil wrapped around the camera, it still manages to interfere with it. So I'm going to try and record a stronger output. Yep. It doesn't like... My camera does not like this. And I cannot stop it recording. Yes, this thing has knocked out my mouse. <clears throat> okay, so we know that works. Unfortunately, I couldn't film it with the camera. I don't know if you can hear that incredible noise in the background, which is Family Guy. But you probably heard an incredible screeching noise coming from this flame when I put it on higher power which usually means that the resistor I'm using here is too high so I might try lowering that and see what happens unfortunately we couldn't get a video of it because it still messes with the camera and also it knocked out my mouse so I had to unplug that and plug that back in Okay, so I decided to do something about the screeching flame. So I dropped the resistor down from 220 kilo ohms to just 100 kilo ohms. Now that seems to have stopped the incredibly annoying noise that it was making. And also, my mouse didn't conk out this time, so I'm going to see if we can record this. Safety is off. So, low power medium power and full power that is just amazing it didn't make the camera glitch out all right so it's time to conduct a little scientific experiment I have made three coils as you can see here these are gonna be my chokes and I'm gonna test each one of these so this one here, because it's wound on the same diameter form, 
uses the same one and has the same amount of turns, that has exactly the same properties as my output resonator, so this will have the same inductance. This one only has half as many turns, so that's going to have around half the inductance. And this one, which is 54 turns, has twice as many turns. In fact, I had to use two pieces of wire because one piece was not long enough. And that will have about twice as much inductance, so we're going to see which one works best. My money's on this one, if I was to make a bet. Okay, so here we are with a 13 turn choke. Not producing much output at all. So let's go over to the 27 turn. That's much better. In fact, that's about the best I've gotten so far. And I'm only doing this on low power. This is not even on high power. And finally, the 54 turn. So, well, it's very close. But I'm going to say that's not quite as much output as we got with the 27 turn choke. So, that's the one I'm going to use. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering why, what this little thing is all about, and why there is a Walkman beside it. Well, that's because I'm going to try and go for audio modulation with this thing. So what I've done is, I've disconnected the cathode, and that's going into this little circuit here, which is made of a MOSFET, a couple of resistors and a couple of capacitors, and yes, I've done the most sinful sin of all. I'm mixing tube state with solid state. However, it doesn't seem to work all that well. Now, I'm just going to move this out the way, because that will get seriously interfered with. And I've, had, I've been having trouble getting these videos recorded, because it keeps interfering with my camera. I'm going to show you this thing in action now. Now you've got to remember that the output's not going to be anywhere near as big as it was before, because it's going through this, which you cannot even see, because of the camera. Now this, this paper that's under it is that doing absolutely nothing, that's just there to stop it wobbling about, because every time I touch this, because it's on a piece of glass, and because it's not completely straight, it chatters about like crazy, and it's irritating me. But anyway, I'll just turn this on and you'll see. And you can see there's a tiny little bit of plasma on the end there. I'm having to re-record the commentary because this interfered with my microphone like you would not believe. But anyway, if I adjust the potentiometer here, I can adjust the size of that. Makes a really weird noise around there. I don't know what that's all about. But as you can see, that actually does work. Alright, we lost it. So I'll just turn it off. But by modulating the input going into the gate there, in theory, I should be able to audio modulate the output of this thing. Although it didn't actually work as good as I thought it would. Did you hear my stomach just then? Okay, so I have to go over to the camera's microphone now because you couldn't even... I just played back the previous video and I couldn't even hear a word I was saying because this makes so much interference. But the webcam's microphone might fare a little better. Again, this is um, only at low power because I found out that this resistor gets incredibly hot. So I'll turn this on. Make sure we've got output. Alright, so there we go. Now I'll play something. Oh, we lost it. I just have to reignite. But I cannot. I mean, that Walkman's on the highest, on full volume right now. And I just cannot hear anything. I did get a little audio modulation earlier, but I don't seem to be even able to get that now. Okay, try one more time, because we should be hearing ACDC's high voltage, which I thought would be a perfect song to play through something like this, but it doesn't seem to want to cooperate.
strange thing is, I can hear something that sounds like the Walkman's motor playing through that. That's about all I can hear. Which is kind of odd. Let me just check that I... Let me just check that I haven't nuked this thing or something. I'm just going to connect a little speaker up to it and make sure that's actually still working. Okay, I thought I'd end this by showing some schematics. So this is the schematic of the power supply. And look at that. I've calculated over a thousand volts. Well, a thousand and fifty, but it's going to be about 900 volts when it's under load. So what we've got here is two transformers back to back. Got a mains transformer here, stepping it down to 24 volts. And it's a center tapped transformer. In fact, they're both center tapped transformers. So that's why they're connected up this way. So 240 volts going in, 24 volts going out, 24 volts going in, and 250 volts coming up because there's a little bit of an imbalance there, but it works. And from there, it goes into a tripler, which rectifies and triplicates the voltage. You might be thinking, well, this is 250 volts, so if you triple that voltage, well, shouldn't it be 750 volts or something like that? Maybe. But you've got to remember, it's AC coming out of those transformers. 250 volts is just the average voltage. The peak voltage is about 1.4 times higher than that. So what we've got is three times the peak voltage. And because I don't have enough 400 volt capacitors, apart from that one there, I've had to string a bunch of 200 volt capacitors together in series, which is all these capacitors along here. And these resistors do two jobs. One is they act as bleeder resistors, so when the thing is unplugged, they'll bleed the voltage down, so after a few minutes or so it'll be safe to touch. But also, but also, it makes sure that the voltage in each capacitor is the same. So we don't get one capacitor more charged than the other one, because that could be bad. Really bad. And this is the tester coil, if you want to call it that, itself. As you can see, it's a very, very simple circuit. Almost nothing to it. So I'll just let you ponder over that. But anyway, if I disconnect the cathode from the ground, I can insert this circuit. So now you can see it a little bit more clearly. So audio goes in, modulates the voltage at the gate of the MOSFET. And I can set the flame size by this variable resistor here, but it didn't work. I was able to set the flame size, but didn't get any audio modulation. So anyway, there's a the circuit. Yeah, like I said, didn't work, but here it is anyway. Anyway, that's just about it for this video. There is another base-fed tester coil that, well, even I made the mistake there saying tester coil. There is another base-fed coil that I want to try, which I'm not going to show you just yet because I want to put it together and make sure it works, and if it does, that's going to be in an upcoming video. But this video is getting too long already, so I'll sign off now by saying what I always say. Until next time, goodbye.